If history really is the best indicator of the future, then it makes a lot of sense to know exactly what and how much happened. For those who are thinking there's going to be a market crash, then this would be some very important and telling information for you. And for those that are thinking about making a move and are worried about a market correction, then buying in some more insulated markets in the past might be a wise dis investment decision for the future. And those that are looking to make an investment and are hoping to find some opportunities for possible big knock it out of the park returns, then that means looking at past markets with maybe big losses might be very informative. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand homes and one of the top agents in Massachusetts. If you have any questions, then I look forward to being your resource for those answers. Let's start with the best performing neighborhoods in Boston. But first, one very interesting thing that I noticed is that in many of these neighborhoods, the peaks and low points for market pricing were during different years. Amazingly, one market actually peaked in 2010 to have two down years, then a huge rebound in 2013. While the peaks were all over the place, most neighborhoods hit their bottom in 2009. Also, as a quick heads up, I used all sales for single family condos and multifamily properties for these data figures. I just felt that there was a more fair analysis as there are significantly more condos in the back bay with very few single families and it's completely vice versa for West Roxbury. So this just made sense to use all data. So what are the top five performing markets? The number five best performer was the Brighton neighborhood. Now property values peaked in Brighton with an average sales price of $364,000 while finding their bottom in 2009 with an average sales price of $331,000. This represents a 9.33% decrease in property values in Brighton. And it took until 2012 for property values to be equal to the peak in 2007 with an average sales price of about $365,000. The number four best performing neighborhood in Boston during the last downturn was Jamaica Plain. Now Jamaica Plain saw its average pricing peak in 2008 at about $421,000. It would then find its market bottom the next year in 2009 when it hit an average sales price of approximately $395,000. Now this accounted for approximately a 6.2% decrease in pricing in the average sales price from peak to trough. By 2012, however, home values in Jamaica Plate had actually exceeded the values that we'd seen in 2008. Now, the third best performing neighborhood was Beacon Hill. The average sale price in Beacon Hill peaked in 2010 at $1.019 million and finding its bottom in 2012 at $1.055 million. Now this accounts for a 4.9% decrease in the average sales price in Beacon Hill properties during the 2008 market crash. By 2013, home values had grown to 1.293 million, accounting for an appreciation gain of 16.7% over that 2010 high. And onto the second best performing neighborhood in Boston was the Back Bay during the 2008 housing recession. Now the Back Bay peaked in values during 2008 at an average sales price of $1.018 million. They reached their low point in 2009 for an average sales price of $990,000. And this accounted for a 2.8% decrease in the average housing price. Now in 2010, the values would then rebound to $1.267 million, equaling a 24% increase over the 2008 peak pricing. And then there was the best performing neighborhood in Boston, which was the South End. Now the South End saw a 1.3% price correction. The South End neighborhood would hit its pricing peak with an average sales price of $710,000 in 2007. Then pricing would dip to $700,000 in 2008, only to rebound to $706,000 in 2009. It wasn't until 2010 when the average sales price reached $716,000, where it surpassed the values that we had seen it reach in its peak in 2007. Now on to the five worst performing neighborhoods in Boston during the 2008 market correction. These neighborhoods had the largest price corrections and would be seen as the neighborhood's best opportunities for investors looking to pick up some great value purchases. And oh yeah, don't be that guy, hit subscribe. The neighborhood that was the fifth worst performing Boston neighborhood was Hyde Park. 
Now, Hyde Park saw a peak in pricing in 2005 with an average sales price of $387,000. Pricing would then retreat for the next six years until finding its floor in 2011 with an average sales price of $262,000. This equated to a 32% decrease in the average sales price. It wouldn't be until 2016 when prices reached slightly above the level seen in 2005 with an average sales price of $399,000. The fourth worst performing neighborhood in Boston was East Boston. East Boston reached an average sales price of $394,000 in 2005, and Eastie would see prices decline to $241,000 in 2009. This represents a 38.8% decrease in the average sales price. East Boston wouldn't meet its pricing peak again until 2014. Now, I personally bought my first home in East Boston in 2008. Looks like I was a year too early in order to get that best deal, but in the long run, it doesn't even remotely matter because I made a fortune on it. And the lesson here is that when you buy for the long term, perfect timing, it just doesn't matter. The third worst performing neighborhood in Boston during the 2008 housing cause recession was Dorchester. Now Dorchester saw prices peak in 2005 with an average sales price of nearly $407,000. And it wasn't until 2009 when Dorchester would find its bottom with an average sales price of $220,000. This represents a decrease in pricing of 45.9%. Now the average price in Dorchester wouldn't exceed the peak it reached in 2005 until 2015 when the average sales price hit nearly $447,000. And then there was the second worst performing neighborhood in Boston, which was Mattapan. Now Mattapan actually bucked the trend of the top seven markets. Every other market in the top seven worst performing markets saw their pricing peak in 2005. Mattapan actually saw that pricing peak in 2006 with an average sales price of $365,000. Now Mattapan would reach its low in 2009 with an average sales price of $177,000. This represents a 51.7% decrease in the average sales price. And it wouldn't be until 2016 when home prices would go beyond that peak that it saw in 2009. And the average sales price in 2016 in Mattapan was $389,000. The worst performing neighborhood in all of Boston was Roxbury. Roxbury saw the average sales price in 2005 peaking out at $375,000. Now, prices would then retreat for the next four years to hit their bottom in 2009 with an average sales price of $165,000. This decrease in pricing from $375,000 to $165,000 represents a 55.9% decrease in pricing. Again, as I mentioned earlier, these average sales prices are for all single family, condos, and multifamily properties. Now, pricing would jump to $374,000 in 2012, but that was really because there were a couple large multifamily properties sold, including one that was for nearly $3 million. Exclude that year and prices wouldn't see the average sales price equal to what they were in the peak until 2014 when that average sales price hit $406,533. As I said before, I believe that we will see market stagflation over the next couple of years, where on average, we won't really see prices go up or down. I do, however, believe that some markets will be impacted more than others, where you could have some that depreciate and some that actually end up appreciating. If there is one thing that I know from experience, well, as well as the data, when you buy for the long term, real estate will be an asset that will perform for you. Would you be interested in seeing this for all markets in Massachusetts? Let me know in the comments section below as it would be a really big undertaking with a lot of data. Just wanna make sure it's something you'd be interested in before I really sink my teeth into this huge endeavor. Are you looking to buy or sell a home in Massachusetts? If so, then I would love to chat with you about your real estate goals and see if it makes sense to work with one another. As a just quick heads up, I don't work with everyone and do limit the amount of people that I can work with at once. But if I can't help you, then I promise you that I'm gonna point you in the right direction. Do you have any comments or questions on the market data? Then throw them in the comments section below. I thank you for taking the time watching this video, so I'm always going to take the time answering all of your questions as well as your comments. And oh yeah, don't be that guy, hit subscribe. And as always, an informed person is a powerful person. So until next time.